And now we can watch our game in peace. I'm keeping an eye on the... Uh... All right, let's the see. The other side of things from my, my other account, but I think I think we should... Oh, I see me flexing. We're good. We are live, people. And now we can watch, now we can watch our game in peace. I'm keeping an eye on the... Uh... Oh, I hear myself. I don't like that. Side of things for my, my other account, I think. <laughs> That's okay. All right, we're here. We did it. What's going on, people? Thank you so much for joining our live stream. Uh, Renee, how are you living? I'm over here making sure I mute every different screen and pop-up that I have going on because I've got a lot going on. Try not to get distracted by uh, all of the different stuff uh, happening right now on my computer. I am so excited. Um, the Battle of Florida, right? That's what we're calling it? I think so. <laughs> Something like that. For Florida, of Florida, in Florida, with Florida. It, it got to do with Florida. <laughs> We are watching the Florida Panthers at Tampa Bay Lightning. The Panthers had to, you know, grind it out on the road and go all the way up to, to Tampa Bay. I think it's up, up and over, right? I don't know. Who knows? Some, yeah, ish. Either way, either way. Well, Renee Hess, founder of Black Girl Hockey Club in the His House. My name is Erica Ayala, founder of Black Rosie Media. We also have Rochelle. Let's go. Introduce yourself to the fine folks. Um, I will be in the chat today. I'm Rochelle Taylor. I'm on the board of directors at Black Girl Hockey Club and just here to have a little fun, watch this lovely battle of Florida and uh, listen to uh, the lovely ladies talk and talk with you guys on the chat. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rochelle. And Isabel is hooking us up with the tech. Thank you so much. Introduce hi, hi. Them. It's um, Technical difficulties, partially my fault, but we, we got everything started and up and running. So I think we are all good. I'm um, admin assistant for Black Girl Hockey Club. You so. got to tell them what you have in your Twitter bio. Um, because... Oh, professional email writer for Black Girl Hockey Club. Yes, and, that's it. And what um, else? Isabel holds it down, quote by Sarah Nurse. Exactly. Yeah. So if Sarah Nurse says that you hold it down, then you hold it down. <laughs> that's legit. Gold medalist knows a thing or two. I love it. I love it. Well, we are so excited. Thank you all for joining us. If you're watching on YouTube, as Rochelle said, you can hop in the chat. We'll be checking that out. You can also watch on blackrosymedia.com because we are squad casting it up, as I like to say in the podcast world. Um, the game has just started. This is game four. And of the first three games, Florida, as in the Panthers, have no wins. So they've got some work to do. Got a little bit of work to do. You know, they came in pretty good regular season, have really struggled on the power play. And despite what a certain women's national team head coach may say, um, special teams kind of important. It, kind of important. Kind of. A little bit. Kind little of bit. a lot of importance. Yes, that was I mean, a Johnson burn. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of what got the Kings eliminated in round one is the complete flat. And, you, it was but it so bad. Save, it couldn't save the Penguins, right? They had great special teams and it couldn't save the Penguins. So it's not just about special teams. I mean, they That's got fair. great goalies, right? I'm a goalie. Pro I'm a proponent of goalies. So like their goalies are amazing. Put some respect on the goalies. Um, you know, um, that some goalies like to advocate for themselves, uh, as we have learned on the overnights. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit. Weaponizing water bottles. Who knew? Who knew? Um, so, yeah, yeah. Thoughts. Thoughts on that. I ranted for sure on Locked on Kraken because, you know, what else do you have to do but talk about the playoffs when your team's not in the playoffs? I saw that, and I appreciated that. And um, go Kraken. Go Kraken. Hey! Whoa! Flip the hat on them! Don't hurt nobody! <laughs> 
I love it. I love it. All right. Let's, let's, uh, Renee, let's get the chat. I'm going to toggle a little bit. If you're watching the stream, let us know if you can let us know where you're watching from and um, who you think is going to win. I know over at Black Rosie Media, I put out a very official poll, right? Who's going to win? Is it going to be Florida as in the state? Is it going to be the Panthers? Is it going to be the Lightning? Or are you just like me rooting for everybody black? I want to know. That's what I picked when I voted. <laughs> everybody black. Everybody. Autumn. Autumn. <laughs> Which means um, we've got what Anthony do no Duclair. We've got Duclair on the Panthers, right? Um, do we have any other melanin going on these teams? Yeah, Edward Belmar on uh, Tampa, formerly Matthew Joseph, but he's in Ottawa now. I see we have some Rochelle fans in the chat. I, I, I also, I too am in that fan club. Love to see it. Okay, Chanel, we see you. Battle of Florida. There we go. Oh my gosh, my fave peeps. You're our fave peeps. Anyone that rocks with Black Girl Hockey Club. I did say this on Locked on Kraken today. I was like, if you rock with Black Girl Hockey Club, you're good with me. I'm paraphrasing myself, which is weird, but basically that's what I said. I said what I said. How do you cite that? That's what I want to know. Uh, as stated by my uh, earlier self. There you, go. <laughs> you can do the email thing I do all the time. As previously noted. Um... I like it. As previously noted, for sure. All right, Kitchener, Kitchener, Ontario. Oh, whoa. Okay, Renee, you got to let us know. Black Girl Hockey Club takes on Canada. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool, right? Oh, goodness. Cool. The leadership of Soroya Tinker, who has been volunteering as a mentor and working with our scholarship committee for the past over a year. Um, we're launching Black Girl Hockey Club Canada. And what that means is we're gonna be having the same programming and the same focus on black women in hockey, uh, but we're taking it to the great white North baby. Um, it's going to be amazing being in Toronto with the Maple Leafs uh, just um, last month really showed how amazing the hockey community is up there. I mean, the Maple Leafs are doing the most. They're really working hard in that community and their programming is amazing. And I'm just super excited to be up in that city. I mean, I'm not gonna be up in that city all the time, but you're gonna see me more uh, up in Canada, just doing our thing, um, you know, creating this amazing community and making sure that all of those girls up there that want to play hockey can play hockey. I'm super excited. And I know with Soroya leading the way, I mean, that girl is um, doing amazing things. She is all over the place. She's just now remind me the exact name of that award that she won, Erica, that you got to announce and text me about. You're like, girl, do you know about this? <laughs> That's right. That's right. In the Premier Hockey Federation, there is an award, the Foundation Award, which essentially each team, we're now up to six teams, they are able to nominate um, a player from their team that is doing exemplary work in the hockey community. So outside of the, the team's schedule, but are doing work in the community, uplifting the community, whether that be hockey related or not. And so the one and only Soroya Tinker has been able to uh, not only win that foundation award, but for the first time in six or excuse me, now seven seasons of the league, formerly the National Women's Hockey League, now the Premier Hockey Federation, there was a sponsor for that award and the league gave out over $60,000, $10,000 to a winner from each team. So you've got 
Black Girl Hockey Club is the recipient on behalf of Soroya Tinker and the Toronto Six. But then you've got the Dynamites, which is another fantastic organization. Ali Thunstrom, who is another really great supporter of Black Girl Hockey Club. I still haven't sent you the pictures, Renee, but when Ali Thunstrom and the Whitecaps played the Buffalo Buttes in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I spent some, I spend half of my time. Um, that she was wearing under their, their jerseys for, for that activation and for that trip, her black girl hockey club swag. So, you know, we fans and friends of black girl hockey club through and through, and you love to see that there's so many ways that we can give back to organizations like again, dynamites, black girl hockey club. Another organization is the Kyle Pavone foundation, Madison Packer, who's in the Packer family, great supporters of black girl hockey club as well, but also really great advocates for mental health awareness. So it goes on and on, but we're so proud of Soroya slam dunk. In my opinion, once I, 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 you know, I know the award comes through. So um, I'm really though honored that there is a sponsor that was able to provide that in-kind donation in the name of the players this year. Really amazing stuff. Honestly, Soroy, again, it's just Soroya Tinker just doing Tinker stuff. She, she's just out here tinking about, uh, being amazing. And, and I love it. It's, it's, and, and that's why I know BGHC Canada is going to be in great hands because with her at the helm, uh, leading the way she texted me the other day saying, this is my full-time job. Now I'm like, girl, you got it better than me. I, I still got like three jobs going, on the right. side, you know, me both for day. <laughs> like, like, listen, but you know what? We do it all in service and absolutely deserving not only tink as you said tink don't be taken um but all of the players women's hockey is definitely growing there's so many amazing people that we've seen come through and we're also seeing more black women in leadership roles obviously angela james was able to come on staff as one of the coaches but now is part of the ownership group along with uh, you know, we've got Bernice Carnegie. So I'm just excited for what is to come. We mentioned Sarah Nurse doing amazing things. I got to see her win that gold medal in Beijing, China. Yeah, I'm you so did. excited. Yes, yes, just amazing. Blake Bolden, I mean, you know, I told you I was rooting for the Kings. Los Kings um, for, for Blake, but she's doing great things too, has been a part of the ESPN broadcasts. Man, did you did y'all see her taking shots on Jonathan Quick? You know, you know she's like, that. oh, y'all gotta watch it. He was like, okay, like you know, let's see how this goes. I don't think I don't think he was ready. I th- I don't know what he, he thought. Was absolutely shot. not ready. Oh, he was not ready. That was amazing. If you have not watched that clip, go watch that clip because he's like settling down for that first one, and then he, then she shoots and he went. Oh, oh, this, oh, this is serious. Okay. Okay. It's and on. Yeah. Actually oh, it's gets on. Into, yeah. No. Yeah. And I still don't think he like fully recovered by the end of the segment. So I was like, I don't know what you was expected. I know she's defender of the year, two time hardest shot champion. So I don't know where he been. He better, he better pull up on me. You better learn about some Blake Bolden. He done learned. He done learned on that segment. <laughs> he didn't know. Now he knows. Like that's how that went. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I don't, I mean, you know, when the Kings are ready to stop messing around, they, they need to just go ahead and sign her play on the ice. That's what I said. <laughs> I love it. We're just out here talking our best. <laughs> I know one scored yet. That's what I was just trying to see. Nobody scored yet. We're there was a fight already, of course, because, you know. A power play going. I'm catching up with the chat. The western suburbs of Chicago. Gal Pal Sports. Let's go. Another great group. King signed Blake Bolden 2022. Who says no? Who says no? So I know there might be some, you know, sad faces in the crowd here, 
uh, we're, we are in round two, which means that, you know, some folks did not make it, not make it through the first round. Were there any surprises in that first round? Um, Rochelle, how about we start with you? Um, I'm still kind of stuck on the third string goalie playing for the pins and actually winning games. Like once we got to that point, I was like, oh God, we're just going to get swept again. This is going to be horrible. But then we won games and we pushed it to game seven, you know, with, you know, so many injuries within that series. It was kind of sad. Um, and then West coast wise, you know, I follow the Kings. So it was, it was actually surprising how bad that power play was like I it was not not great it was not it was just it was abysmal and I actually got to go to game six and I was like this is great and then the third period was not great so yeah those are my two big spreads trying to get my lighting better here but yeah, that was, um, yeah, power play, not great. Goalie, <laughs> goaltend. I mean, listen, injuries are a part of the game. I, I for one, am still a little bit baffled coming from, you know, c- certainly women's sports, but also even just thinking about other men's sports. I-, I think it's so interesting that the NHL does seven games, like right off the bat. That seems like, in a word, hell. <laughs> for the athletes like immediately intense like you don't you get no breaks no breaks and even in the nba it's not it's not every second day there's a little bit more of a break i've seen which is why these two playoffs take forever (laughs) like they start in march and end in july i feel like i don't know (laughs) It's like six months out of the year, it's playoffs. Something like that. But, you know, I'm with Rochelle. As, as we all know, I'm a Penguins fan. And so I was watching that series. And, you know, I think all season long, I've been wondering, what are they going to do about, you know, a, a backup goalie? We, we need to have some really strong um, goal, goalie ship if we're going to make it through to the the rounds of the playoffs and it just came to fruition. Um, Even, you know, when Tristan Jari went out before playoffs, I think most of the fans kind of knew it was going to be tough with just (laughs) when that fool went out in what the first game, it was just, um, yeah, I think we all knew we were living on a a wing and a prayer at that point. Um, and it was, you know, it wasn't Matt Murray in 20, was that what, 27, 16, 2016, when he did that, um, coming in and wowing the show, it was a struggle the whole time um, with uh, Deming, which, I mean, he did his best, but he, it just wasn't, he hadn't played an NHL game <laughs> until the playoffs. Can you imagine? Um I, I thought I thought he hadn't played any, Rochelle. Um, did he play two, you said? I think he had like two in the season. And then he's going up against, you know, like Igor, who just... Freaking Igor, yeah. Oh, Good wall. God. A brick wall, yeah. So that, that was really no surprise. It was hard to watch. Um, and then I think for me as a Penn fan, you know, fan seeing cap the captain go down uh knowing that he had a concussion at that point I was kind of checked out like let's just get him let him be okay with his history that was really what I where I was by that time game seven was kind I didn't watch game seven it was on Sunday after the Buffalo shooting my mind was not there I you know I just couldn't I couldn't. And so when I, I think Rochelle, we had the, which the chat going briefly and we kind of knew where it was going. Um, but yeah, no, no surprises. Uh, and then of course, I'm just excited to see the Florida teams battle it out. This is kind of, that's kind of fun to me. Um, just like the, the other one that's going on with the to t- Chucks up North, they're having <laughs> their little thing up yeah, there. Well. Battle of Alberta. Right. I love it. I love it. 
Battle of Alberta. Uh, I saw people <laughs> making comment that perhaps Alberta is akin to Florida, like the Florida of Canada. I was like, I'm not sure that I want to know what that means. <laughs> weirdly conservative with extreme weather exactly that's yeah, what i said oh, and then they were like it. you nailed it i was like okay <laughs> okay good to know that's hockey as uh, john forslund would say that's hockey baby yeah <laughs> as laszlo holmes would say let's do that hockey <laughs> do that hockey do that hockey and oh another fight skirmish skirmish <laughs> it's not like a real fight what was the well there there was a lot that i feel like a lot happened over the weekend in the hockey <laughs> i couldn't keep up with it all but who was the goalie that Start, got got the fight going or because he got like railed <laughs> we talking saint uh lewis oh yeah well well there was that too but okay it sounds like something jordan bennington would do yeah, yeah. bennington there, okay. the one that got by milan me, me luchik didn't he isn't there a goalie that got run over by luchik yeah, that's what that was was talking about. That was the one I was talking about. If it was, was Edmonton, like, then probably Mike Smith. The fact that we can't even keep up. <laughs> I'm just getting, I'm getting the, tw the, the Twitter version of it all. <laughs> exactly. Hockey Twitter, keep me updated because I don't know what's going on. yeah who knows who knows yeah so goalies you know got to protect the goalies that's a thing that's a thing in in hockey which is interesting because part of the reason i couldn't keep up um live with some of the games over the weekend in the last day or two is because i was calling some soccer games and i feel like in soccer there are like rules you know like the goalie essentially has the right of way but these goalies come out like <sighs> like flying monkey style and just like punch people in the face and it's like as long as you're going for the ball it's all good <laughs> goalies don't need no protection <laughs> they're the enforcers i love it there's a special psychology behind goalies i don't care what sport it is you have to have a very specific mindset and the only thing I can think of, the only one that doesn't have a obvious goal is baseball. And the only one I can kind of like maybe connected to is closers. Like it's kind of like, it's got to be a very specific mindset if you're going to be a goalie, no matter what. Because you to actively want things to come at you with like a lot of speed. That's not me personally. Like that is not something I would sign up for. And they do it on purpose. And then they practice. On purpose. Yeah. I would say maybe um, for baseball, although the rules have changed a lot and they do a lot more to protect catchers, but I would say to catch. Mm. Yeah. As someone who has played catcher, like you're almost like, oh yeah, you come on in and see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. Well, as, as, as someone is uh, very famous and said, there's too many balls coming at my face. So I'm just like, I'm out. Is this just going to be three hours of clueless references? absolutely <laughs> too many balls oh good good movie classic my favorite thing about hockey is whenever a player loses his edge away from anybody and just falls on the ice for like no reason it's very funny to me i just saw it happen before the commercial makes me feel better like when i fall like in general like, that's actually their job and they're falling when like, there's nothing around so you know i feel better about myself and my balance so it's good exactly ice is slippery from what i hear 
See, my thing is like, I, I can fall, but I'm not getting back up. <laughs> Just slide me to the nearest exit, to the Zamboni exit. <laughs> I'll like, help me take my skates off and then I'll get up. And then I'll get up. If I like, fall, I'm down. It'd be like the, like the little kids that like to be pulled with the hockey sticks. <laughs> just like, just, just take me away. Exactly. Exactly. Rochelle knows. Running that skate like, with like a, a, a metal I, chair pushing in front of me on the ice um, to keep me upright. It's like a, a core memory. I'm always um, walking on ice, especially rinks is a, <laughs> an acquired skill. I always think of, have you guys ever seen Cool Runnings? Um, yeah, there's yeah. a bit There's a bit where they're learning how to walk on ice on a rink and uh, their coach is telling them, you know, like grip with your toes and stuff like that. It's, it's weird. It's hard to describe how to walk on ice, but it's actually, I think of that scene every time I am struggling to walk on ice. Just walk very slowly. You, you kind of put your feet straight up and down. It's, anyway. Hey, Sebastian. Oh, he's like not ready quite yet. He's getting, getting all the ones and twos ready. Can you hear me? <laughs> hey. Hey. Sorry, it's a, it's a new, I got this for my classes. It's brand new. <clears throat> Is it? In, is it in between periods now? I can't tell. Not yet. I'm at, well, I, I guess we should say I'm at 213 left in the first. Shots on goal. Favor Florida 12 to 3. Yeah, the play really favors Florida. I'm at like two and a half left in the first. Yeah, like three shots? It's like, that's not a lot. You need more than that. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, this game is on TNT in the States. Sportsnet, right, in Canada. So um, Isabel and Sebastian, in Canada, where you guys are, um, who are who's, who's folks rooting for? We have some Canadian teams in it. I mean, we've got we've got folks um, making a way, and they're gonna be making a way. So who 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 are people rooting for up there? I can see cheering for whoever makes it out of Alberta. I think I'd slightly rather Edmonton win, but there's not much in it. Um, a lot of uh, there are a lot of Leafs haters. Probably more Leafs haters than Leafs fans out there. Um. And so a lot of people might just cheer for whoever eliminates them. However, that's getting to be a dynasty and it's a bit boring cheering for them. Um, surprisingly, more Avs fans up here than I'd have expected. A couple more people um, like Colorado than I'd have thought. So maybe that too. The history with Colorado up here, right? So yeah, I'll come back, <clears throat> especially because I'm right on the border here. I think, uh, I think me, I, I'd prefer... One of the best Stanley Cups I ever watched was uh, the 0304 right before the lockout, the Tampa and Calgary. And I think I'd like to see that again. Oh, okay. I'm rooting, in addition to rooting for Everybody Black, I'm also rooting for Everybody Kraken. And all that we have left is ya boy boy, <laughs> Cali. <laughs> If we're talking about replays of past uh, Stanley Cup finals, 1996, Colorado, Florida, I'd really like to watch that again. See if people throw rats on the ice again. So I got to know, as like a newer hockey fan, you guys say Florida, and it seems like you know who you're talking about. Is that a thing in hockey where you say Florida and you mean this team and then I'm assuming you guys are talking about the Panthers yeah and then you say Tampa Bay when you're talking about Tampa Bay yeah I never clued in until a couple of days ago that when I say Tampa versus Florida it might be a little confusing I'm confused I but I am easily confused so that's a thing yeah the Panthers I guess they were like we have a monopoly 
because they put the state in their name. So there's that. I saw Erica react to something a couple seconds ago, and I know that she's about 10, 15 seconds ahead of me. And you're like 10 That's seconds ahead of me too. So I'm waiting. Yeah, uh, I I just got through the first, um, but the last two minutes ish were a Florida power play. Seventeen to three on the shots. Good Lord, have mercy! Just getting there. Seventeen to three, Ooh. shots on goal, favoring Florida, the Panthers. A lot, yeah. Oh, I guess I don't want to eliminate it. So. Tampa's getting yelled at in the locker room. Ooh. Goalies are getting their bell rung <laughs> this Stanley Cup playoffs. I feel like if it was anyone but Vasilevsky, they'd have been in trouble. But hmm. Okay, so we're we're pretty much at intermission or will be soon for everyone. Yeah. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Made it through. Yay. You so did it. You're watching hockey when you have no emotional connection to the teams whatsoever. Like I watching those penguin Rangers games, my heart was in my throat the entire time. And I'm like on the verge of tears. Oh, Hey, look, it's Claude Giroux. Sorry. I got distracted by Claude Giroux. Yeah, but watching this game, I'm just like, oh, look, they're fighting. And oh, look, shots on goal. You know, like none of that stuff is emotionally trying for me. Are there folks um, in the chat or watching, I wonder, who are emotionally invested in this game right now? I want to hear how are you feeling? Mm, Yeah, let us know. I'm in Florida, which is very interesting. I was around very sad Panthers fans yesterday. That was sad. But I I can't say that I absorbed any of that energy. I just observed it. That's important. Sometimes you have to observe and not absorb. Anyway, I'm going to step away from the one and two from the microphone. Because every 20 minutes, I try to move my body a little. So if anyone wants to join me, I'm going to stand up, do a little stretchy stretch. (laughs) Also, hire women in sports. Tell us about that colorway. Oh, yeah. I have the Gotham FC colorway. The Megan Reyes amazing shirt. I love your photo of the... I love my pride 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 colors. colors. Yeah, I love my pride colors. I actually have two. I had the gold, the black and yellow, because of course... I get yellow, (laughs) black and yellow. (laughs) <laughs> have my black and yellow, black and yellow. And then I, when the, the pride one came out, I had to get it. Um, you can still get these shirts. Uh, the proceeds aren't coming back to BGHC right now. They're going to, is it Athlete Ally that the proceeds are going to, I believe. For Megan's shirt? I'm yeah. not sure. I gotta keep up with her. She's, she's doing big things with Angel City FC these days out in Cali. And then I, I didn't bring my, I didn't pack my K train, Kelsey trainer or my black Rosie stuff. I don't know what I was doing. Hey, you packed a <laughs> bunch of sundresses. I sure did. Flip flops. So that's what matters. <laughs> You're in Florida girl. But uh, let me see. I'm going to drop all of the links because not only should we hire or like we should definitely high, hire, invest and pay in women. We should definitely high, hire, invest and pay black women. We should definitely hire, invest and pay in indigenous and Latine and Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander women, like all of the things. But we also have to like put folks on when amazing women are doing amazing things. So we'll make sure to drop the links. I will put them in the chat on YouTube. 
That's a great idea. And if you um, tweet them out, I will too. Okay, first up is Kelsey Trainer. Now, as you mentioned, the proceeds, I think right now for Kelsey Shop are headed over to Athlete Ally, but they have in the past come to Black Girl Hockey Club. Yes, thanks for that correction. I wasn't talking about Megan's uh, shirt. I was talking about Kelsey Trainer's shirt. Um, the Empower w Women, Pay Women, uh, Invest in Women that amazing campaign. Um, the proceeds are going to Athlete Alley right now, um, but you've got to support um, Trainer. She is doing an amazing uh, thing with these shirts. And my favorite thing is to see them like everywhere. Athletes all in through all sports are wearing um, this shirt because the message is important and it's concise and the gear is cute. Uh, but Megan's shirt that um, you have, and I also have the same one in the rainbow, uh, that's, is it still available? I, I remember she mentioned that she was going to wrap it up. Uh, so yeah. now it's a collector's item. That's Can't right. get it before. Yeah, I think she, she stopped uh, these. There was one also for um, Team Canada. Um, yep. So that was fun. With the red and the white colorway, right? Gorgeous. Love that idea. Um, and and love that that message on both of those shirts. Did you say you put the link somewhere? I gotta find it. The link is in the YouTube chat. I'll drop it um, so you can grab it as well. And then, I mean, I'm just saying you can get you some Black Rosie gear too. Also in the chat, Black Rosie Media, get your flex on. Uh, so the guys are in the studio now. I um, can't hear what they're saying, but I see a, a graphic of they're talking goaltending right now, which I mean, when the Panthers put up 17 shots and have no goals as compared to Tampa Bay's three shots, also no goals. <laughs> I think it stands to reason that they're talking about goaltending. Sports Center is talking about Tampa Bay's fourth line, which is a bit less interesting than goaltending, I feel. I was going to say they're behind because we already talked about goaltending. We've moved on to um, pay women. And, <laughs> and that's right. Really so. Yeah, this is, um, you know, this is the alternate broadcast essentially right now. This is this is our intermission report and extra extra read all about it uh, or tweet all about it. Pay women. <laughs> Tweet all about it. You know what? I'm putting the link on Twitter as we speak to Kelsey. Tweet all about it. Do it. Do it. Also, you know, I love that infographic where you basically were like, Ooh, NHL, you want to know what we should do to diversify? You want to be all DEI'd up? Hire Black women. <laughs> it's like the number one thing on the list. It's like the, the first thing on the list. And I will stand by that the, the clubs that have hired Black women are doing amazing things. The Toronto Maple Leafs, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Seattle Kraken. I mean, I, even the, the Metropolitan Riveters uh, in the past season, the Toronto Six, like, come on guys, look at the, the playbook. It's like right there. We gave it to you. It's, it's working out. So um, let's, keep, let's keep it going. 
Let's keep it happening. I'm really excited for um, speaking of the Maple Leafs again, um, their coaching um, and management development programs. Those applications are open right now. You can find them on the NHL.com Toronto Maple Leaf website. It's open to um, minority folk who are interested in coaching um, and interesting in management. There's two different tracks to this program. Um, and if you get chosen, uh, you get to work for the organization for a year. And the folks who worked in that program last year, I got to meet some of them um, in Toronto when we had our amazing Black Lady Lunch. Uh, and um, it's just really cool to see what they're doing. Uh, and, and I can't wait to see who hops into that program next season because I anticipate it being really something very special. And I know there are other programs doing similar things in different ways. You know, the boss, I mean, I'm not a huge Bruins fan, but they have a, a very similar mentorship program in their organization as well. Um, and it's just really cool to see that uh, taking priority for some of these clubs. Um, and so like, I ain't trying to take credit for the idea or anything, but like hire black women. I mean, I think there should probably be some kind of timeline that's like, you know, uh, B, 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 before Black Girl Hockey Club, <laughs> before Black, before we talked about hiring Black women uh, and versus after. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I um, found a link to the Leafs employment program. So I just dropped that in the YouTube chat if anyone's interested. Yes. Well, it's important. I mean, I know a lot of people, uh, Toronto, not in the United States, but here in the U.S., we're talking a lot or preparing for the 50th anniversary of Title IX and a lot of people making an argument that, um, you know, not enough being done. And part of the reason is that these, pi these pipelines have not existed for women um, and certainly not for Black women. Um, and melanated, as I like to say, faces. So I think it's critically important that there be, and we talked about it actually on, I think it was, was it with Toronto? Toronto was there. One of our, was it one of our Juneteenth um, where we talked about, you know, what gets measured gets improved. And when you have intentionality behind wanting to hire women and people of color, then lo and behold, you will find that there will be women and people of color on your staff. Just to pull it back to mentorships real quick, because that's going to make a little quick plug. Uh, we do have a leadership and development uh, program with Black Girl Hockey Club, and the next term is coming up. So get them applications in if you want to be a mentor or a mentee. Um, that has been like one of my favorite things. I get to do with Black Girl Hockey Club and just watching the progress over this last term. I can't wait to share that with everybody because it's so great. And we've got such good mentors and the mentees are just, and it's all ages, um, Black all people, genders. all ages, genders, everybody can apply for it. And we've got a couple uh, mentees that are in their 30s, which are just like, I, that's so exciting for me. So just really excited about that. So check that one out too. And if you're on our YouTube page, there's a lovely video from our president talking about the mentorship program. You can just Drop right the over link. there and watch it. Drop the link, Rochelle. Sebastian, you shared some really cool news in the chat. And as you were sharing it, I actually got a text message about the same thing. <laughs> And I, I'm, I, I would love for you to, to share what you shared with us in the chat for the, for the world. All five of the people who are watching us live stream can know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing news because, you know, I, I don't know if Erica has met her yet, but I know we all have. And we're just all impressed by, by her body of work at such a, a young age. But yeah, Dayton O'Donoghue just just announced her commitment to Dartmouth, um, which is a, a very prestigious uh, D1 college hockey program. That's, that's massive. She's, I can't find the words because I'm just so blind, blown away by the person she already is. And this is just amazing. I was very happy for her.
That is amazing. Dayton O'Donoghue's gotten two Black Girl Hockey Club scholarships in the last couple of years. Uh, she plays hockey up in Canada. I got to meet her and she got to be on a panel with us um, in Toronto uh, at MLSC Launchpad with the Maple Leafs. I mean, this woman, this young woman uh, was on a hockey panel with Soroya Tinker, Sarah Nurse, Reagan Subban, hosted by Shereen Ahmed, and she held her own. She was up there spitting knowledge. Sebastian and Isabel Rochelle, we were all there. It was just really amazing to see what she is able to accomplish. And honestly, I'm just excited that Black Girl Hockey Club could have a little part on that journey for her because I, I can only imagine what she's going to you know, continue to do and accomplish. So Dayton, um, we know you're not watching because you probably have a life and you have better things to do, uh, but we are so, so excited for you and just so proud um, from all of your aunties and uncles over at BGHC uh, and Black Rosie. Uh, keep it up, girl, keep it up. Yeah. And if anyone wants to uh, send her congratulations, I just, I'm going to drop the Instagram post where she announced her commitment in the chat, in the YouTube chat. Really? So if you want to go over there, um, post a comment, um, just say, say congrats to her. I feel like that would be appreciated. Yeah. I love it. You see the real work is getting done. Black women. I remember Renee, when we talked as I was getting ready to launch Black Rosie Media, we were talking and you mentioned like, Every time something needs to get done, more often than not, it's Black women or women of color that are doing it, or women, period. Um, and if we need something or if we want something, a lot of times we have to go out there and do it ourselves before we can, uh, even, and even sometimes when we do have proof of concept, we still don't um, necessarily get the support to then bring things to scale. Um, but what I love about Black Girl Hockey Club is like, I get the sense as someone who's volunteered and has been able to moderate some panels that that's like, no matter, we're going to do what we know needs to get done regardless. And like we said earlier, those who are with us, cool. Co-conspirators, sign up, uh, come through, roll through. Everybody else, wish you the best, but don't get in our way. <laughs> exactly. And like you said, you know, doing the work, um, it's, it's been really great to not just do the work alone, but you know we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's folks out there who are doing it. Um, what BGHC does is we collect, we we pool our resources and we make a collective space so that we can um, be more successful. And since we're sharing amazing news, I've got to shout out one of our other scholarship awardees who's a little bit younger. Um, Lincoln Brown, she got accepted to go to Culver Boarding Academy. Uh, it's in Indiana. Um, she is passionate about hockey. She's been playing like since she was four. This is what she wants to do. And it's been really cool to see her grow up in Black Girl Hockey Club. Like what? How, how is like even before we were a thing, she was there. And, you know, she's, she's, um, doing great things. And it's just, it's really cool to see um, all of our collective work um, that we are all doing uh, come to fruition in girls like Lincoln and Dayton. So my heart is full, y'all. So much good news. So anyone that is watching along with us, or if you are watching on the replay, please do share this work. It is critically important, um, creating pathways and pipelines that have not existed or have not been consistent um, or have not trickled down to black girls and women or people of color. Um, I, I said it again today on Locked on Kraken as I ranted Oh, about some of the news in that other series. I don't even, I, I can't even, I can't, I can't. 
But, um, you know, I, I, I will continue to say that Black Girl Hockey Club is like the balm. You know, every once in a while you get asked, well, you know, how does it feel to be a Black woman in the world? And I'm like, I have only ever been this. But what I do say is, you know, in the face of people asking if I've experienced, you know, X, Y, Z, I shift the focus and I say what makes it tenable uh, what makes it manageable are spaces like this. So thank you to all of you. You've been an amazing support system for me. I'm so grateful to know you. We do it all together, you know, and that's the beauty of it. Um, co collective community, whatever you want to call it, um, we're doing it together. See, we got a puck drop happening. Um, second period, here we go. Ding, ding. Vasilevsky uh, doing Vasilevsky things because, Vasilevsky, Vas oh yeah. my gosh. I'm st look, I still get flashbacks of the series the Pens played against him where Bishop went out and we're like, okay, backup goalie, we might have this. And then he decided he was not ever going to let a goal in ever. So, you know, same things. 20 shots already, he's got nothing. His team's doing nothing for him. Come on. Yeah. They, they uh, Tampa, that is, have as many shots in this second period as Tampa Bay has in the entire game. <laughs> Crazy, Meng. Ooh, hard into the boards. That's been happening a lot. You saw it, right? Oh, oh another skirmish. That's been happening a lot in this series, I feel like. Yowza. <laughs> Oof. And those boards are not padded. That's one of those things, too. I'm like, ow. In some arenas in Canada, those boards are um, attached to, like, concrete. So there's no give at all. Yeah, and then the retaliation was tough, too. Let's see what they're going to say here. Oh. I knew that Kucherov shot wasn't going to result in anything because um, Erica didn't react. I know she's ahead of me. You got to school your face, Erica. You're giving it all the way. I'm like at least 30 seconds behind you guys. <laughs> oh, his leg went in, his right leg, right? Yeah. Hey, Tampa got two more shots. Good for them. I think this power play is a, you know, one of those moments of the game, see if we can shift some momentum because the ice been tilted so far. There is something to be said when the ice is tilted that much and there's still no goal though. Like they're, they've had 20 shots on goal where at my count where I'm at right now and no score, that is, not great. And they've had a power play, right? At least one that I noticed. Well, there's a question in the chat. Are the pens the only team changing how the boards are structured? I didn't even, did y'all know about this? What's, what's going on with the pens and the boards? Tell me, Oak Tree 3, what are yeah. they doing um, changing the board structure? Are they putting cement behind it like they are in Sebastian's rinks up in Canada? Because we're not for that. Maybe not they're for like, that. like foam. 
maybe incredible well, marshmallows behind marsh them. Really nice. marshmallow i love it i i would figure it's hard to put cement right because those are like multi-use like doesn't um duquesne is that the college team that plays in that arena sometimes is that or did i make i don't know i maybe made that up in which know. arena in the in the penguins then, arena? yeah is what is, is that that's pp ppg paints right PPG paints yeah do they play in there i have no idea i'm pretty sure i saw a basketball game there one time I have a good friend from Pittsburgh, shout out to Carolyn, and her father is an alum from whatever school, I can't remember that yeah. <laughs> place there. Well, congratulations to him and all of his classmates at um, the unknown school that we're very proud of. Yeah. So, um, so that power play did not tilt the ice so much, seeing as there was no shots on goal from the team that had the power play, and then the team that was defending got one more shot on goal. I'm thinking not so much. Ooh, will we get a shorty? We should, you know, what we should have done? We should have done a bingo card. Oh, that would have been so much fun. Be like. I almost said drinking game, but yours is a bit more family friendly. <laughs> Bingo card. What would a what would an, a men's NHL bingo card look like? I feel like I would just make it a bunch of things that I know they're absolutely not going to say, like Black Lives Matter. <laughs> I mean, too much. Did I lie? I probably not. <laughs> Maybe, maybe end racism, but definitely not Black Lives Matter. What a novel idea. I think we should do that. Right? I already have a note going. If you start, if you keep saying things, I'm going to keep making them. All right. Let's get the chat going too. What are things that we would absolutely never hear in an MNHL game that we should put on the bingo card? Oh. This is Laura from Book Club, by the way. They have a team of college students coming up with new designs that are supposed to be safer. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, how about put, we should put safety on the bingo card. Their safety. Um, what about safety? Literally anything. <laughs> Got it. I already have, I, I wrote yours to say, someone says literally anything about racism. So I'll do a, that thing again, but for safety. Yeah. Anything positive about the officiating, like that's never, ever going to happen. These are such broad strokes. Some of these have to be um, feasible. Well, see, I don't get to. What about pucks in deep? <laughs> I was going to say pucks in deep, dude. Pucks in deep. I haven't seen the interviews, though, because we are talking over them. Um, but I would imagine that would be an easy spot on the bingo card to get. For sure. As long as there's intermission reports, we're getting bucks in deep. <laughs> or, or obviously, obviously. Can we get obviously? Yeah, I was, I was about to say that actually. Any for interview sure. where a player says obviously. And for sure. For yeah, sure. Every time. Every or time. yeah, you said it. <laughs> That's the worst. When you ask a question and they're like, oh yeah, like you said, I'm like, no. Nah! So like all of us could do one of the intermission interviews like without even watching the game we can just sit and be like yeah no we just need to get bucks in deep you know and just uh make sure we're you know playing our game and you know making sure that you know we keep passing it and um you know gotta, uh, gotta run gotta all four lines out there gotta, you know all four lines gotta be contributing um gotta keep the the that going and you know stay out of the box obviously and uh you know, support our goalie, making sure that, you know, support you know, he's goalie, down there right. and make sure the defense is doing what it's needed to do and make sure that, you know, they're joining the rush, of course. So, I mean, you know, Rochelle, keep, I am amazed. keep that compete level, <laughs> want to keep that compete level high. I, oh, but, okay. So before hockey, I, I, I never used that word in that way. What is, what is compete level? Like, it, it doesn't make sense. Stick to itiveness is the other one that I hear a lot. 
in hockey oh, that I, I don't hear other sports. Intuitiveness. Mike <laughs> Sullivan says that all the time. All the time. And it is probably like I like writing it out. Stick to itiveness. Like what does that mean? Yeah. I love it. I was gonna say that um you guys watch Letter Kenny, right? The when the the hockey players parody talking to the media they they just say everything that Rochelle just said and it's very very funny go Renee, to the net we've got go to the net the town the town that letter Kenny is based off of is only like 40 minutes from me so next time you're here I'm taking you for a trip and I'm gonna send you home with some maple syrup I bought some maple tea when I was in Canada and I brought home like four jars of Canadian honey as well. Um, the maple syrup, I don't, I probably wouldn't use it because I was going to buy some, but the maple tea is right up my alley. I already have Canadian maple tea, but I bought more and I got three kinds. Oh my gosh. One of them is like a fancy berry that I've never heard of. It's like, ugh, I'm going to go grab it just to show you. <laughs> I want to know more. I love tea. I did not know maple tea was a thing. Oh, maple tea is so good. There was an actual, like, a French-Canadian brand that I found on... Actually, no, somebody sent it to me for a Christmas gift, and then I could never find it again, and I had a friend just send me a box. Um, a couple... I think it was, like, 2020 Christmas. You know, we were all sad and in the house, and she sent me some of this beautiful tea, and then when I was in Canada, I bought more. I'm going to grab it because it is really good. If you like, it's a black tea. I think the one that I bought recently is like Ceylon. Um, and it's just infused with maple. It's so good. That sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. Love a good tea. Love a good tea. Oh. Ooh. I'm also I literally threw a mini tea at work today, like complete with sandwiches and scones and everything because, you know, why not? It was Monday. We needed something to do. I was going to say that um, I mentioned I got some honey from Canada. There's this company that sells honey called Nutra, Nutra B honey, I believe, Nutra B. And, um, I have actually like become a honey snob apparently and will only order my honey from there. Girl, they have turmeric honey. They have ginger honey. They have black seed honey. They have royal jelly honey. They're like 20 something a bottle. And what? they last me for like a month. And I came home. I was like 10 pounds overweight on my suitcase because of this honey. I didn't even care. It was Hi. worth it to bring it over. So what is it called? Tell me, tell me. A, how about I drop the link in the YouTube chat? Um, I, I'm giving them a shout out. My good friend Shireen Ahmed is an influencer for Nutri B Honey, and she has influenced me, and I shall influence all of you as well. I love it. Yeah, if there's a promo link or an affiliate link, drop that too. We want to get those sales there. I know how that goes. Um, haven't had maple tea. Is my Canadian citizenship in jeopardy? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, guess you don't need a lot of shots to score. <laughs> I'm like, did Tampa just score? Yes, yes, they yes, did. They did. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, on the seventh Ooh. shot of the game, Florida's like, what is happening? Yeah. Ooh, deflection, five hole. Look at that. Yeah. Shots on goal, 25-7, 11-16 in the second. Oh, they're reviewing something. Well, let me.
Missed game stoppage in the offensive zone is the challenge. Whenever I was in um, Canada, I got to see uh, where they get those calls at. <laughs> I don't know, uh, I, I was in a few states, so it's hard to remember, but Amrit Gill was walking me all around um, Scotiabank and she was like, oh yeah, you know, whenever they call um, Toronto, this is where they do it at. And it, it was just really cool um, to, to know that there's, yep, there's that room. <laughs> Analysis That's group. cool. Interesting. Interesting. We'll see what happens here. Also, have seen the um where the concussion spotters are when they're at the old NHL headquarters though, before they moved. So they're going to look to see if this went out of play, hit the net. They did not call that. And that reset for Tampa is what led to their goal. The drama. They're playing. Now, is this their it only goal, or this is their a, only a, goal. another goal? Oh, no, okay. this is the goal. The mm -hmm. goal. I honestly didn't know that you would. They would go back and do a missed game stoppage. Um, anything i've never seen that happen before a little behind the scenes look that they just uh showed was too like all the people looking at the screens and stuff like that that was actually kind of cool I get conflicted on these types of recalls or um, reviews because I kind of liked it when human error was in the game, but also like play until you hear the whistle. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're looking at the reactions too. I don't know if that is conclusive evidence. <laughs> but certainly indicative it's so hard because like the puck you can't see the, the netting really in that shot and then this could also cost florida uh their challenge is what they're saying now interesting back to our bingo board i we have some uh Brian dropped in some more hockey buzzwords. Net front, net front presence, greasy goals. Oh, yeah, I got that one on. Yeah. I should have had goal gets challenged on the bingo board. I would also put goalie interference. Was it goalie interference? Who knows? Was Who it actually knows what goal? Does anyone know what goalie interference is? What is a okay, kicking motion? That. What is a kicking motion? Still nobody knows. This is a long one. They're doing cha-cha slide now. The feed that they keep looking at, too, is or at least the TV crew on, on sports, and it's really brainy. I don't know how they, how they come to a, a conclusion on this. Yeah, I, I've lost the puck every single time I try to, <laughs> like, Well, hopefully they're talking to Toronto because they have more views than the local TV would. 
Yeah, and that's what they keep showing that control room that Renee was talking about. I enjoy that they're playing the cha cha slide in the arena right now. Yeah, cha cha slide. Now they've moved on to the wobble. I'm sorry to, but so get your wobble on. Crazy. All right, so after watching this again, the puck does kind of just, like, I feel like it would have went further if it didn't hit something. That's where I'm kind of at with this, but I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's, I just, I completely lose the puck. I, I have no idea what I'm looking at. And in that instance, I mean, if it hits the glass, it would ricochet in a different way, wouldn't it? Let's get the physician on the line. Or not physician, F physics, physics professor, physician, <laughs> the physics professor. <laughs> we need to measure the angle. The physicist, yes. Physicist, thank you. I was like, that's not the word. Physician, let's get the doctor on the line. <laughs> physicist, there it is. This is such a long challenge. Who, what is this, baseball? Like, come on. Oh, they're coming back for me. They said it was an eight and a half minute review. <laughs> Wow. I didn't say what it was, so everyone can catch up. <laughs> 8.5 minutes. Yeah, it's usually never good when it's a long review. Not for the call on the ice at eight, nope. <laughs> yep. And they're also adjusting the clock, it sounds like. All right, so who scores? Who scores the next one? I mean, who scores the first one at this point? Good Lord. This is crazy. And they took the shot attempt away, too. That's the crazy <laughs> part. just all the stats. You're like, nah, mm -mm, take it back.
I feel like the intensity has picked up since that eight and a half minute. Well, they're all rested now because they weren't yeah. doing anything right now. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Oh, A plus chance. Add that to the mango board. What chance? A plus chance, A plus A, plus A grade, <laughs> or grade A, I guess. <laughs> They're going to commercial, and the guy goes, uh, the puck caught him in between the belly button and the knee. <laughs> 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 Does that go on the bingo board or no? No. I've never heard that before, but I thought it was hilarious. Oh man, I'm looking at the chat. Brian saying that when when the puck vanished into the gear and it took them ten minutes to find it. Oh my gosh! So, are you excited? I am. I'm a little nervous. Euphemism bingo square. That makes that makes sense. In between the belly button and the knee. <laughs> Hey, Peter, thanks for joining. Had a wild and crazy review. Oh! <laughs> Ooh. I don't know if everyone's there yet. Off the face off. Yeah, that was a no doubter right there. That's right. That one counts. Don't think that one's coming back. No, definitely not. Uh, yeah, goalie's got to have that one. Yeah. Ice scraper, Selly. What are they? Oh, Wait that's a, a good one for the bingo square. Um, anyone, anyone saying that goalie's going to want that one back? <laughs> yeah, that one a lot. So that might be getting reviewed. I'm looking at it now. I have it muted, but oh, oh. Look at the face off. Yep. What did I miss? Oh, look at the face off replay. Oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> Tip out here cheating. Okay, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> Tampa's trying. They're not <laughs> shooting, but they're trying. Listen. Okay, oh. now that I'm just now seeing that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that, uh, not 100%, but fairly certain that's also a penalty, too. What is that one called? The, the close of the hands on the puck. I don't know. I, is that is that what it's yes, called? Yeah, that's that's what it's called. Okay, it just sounds so explanatory. And yes, and yes, it is a pill. And I don't think they're sick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
I'm gonna say the catcher's over there shaking his head like he's not gonna challenge that. He needs to challenge the. Even the uh, old um, I'm or not wrong prior wrong sport. Ralph was saying it should be a no go and it should have been a stoppage. So it looks like they're saying, I heard rule 79, I heard hand pass. <laughs> I'm seeing hand pass, I'm seeing delay of game. That's a new one. They're not going to ref, uh, let's say referee this game by video. Yeah. yeah. Co coaches challenge hand pass. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, penalties, like, I always thought face-off infractions were delay of game penalties, but. Yo, this game is wild! <laughs> I'm assuming this one also got... Okay, has this happened before, or is this the first time? Because this they're seems literally like literally talking about it. They're like, like, like they keep showing the coaches just like <laughs> everyone is in shock. Oh the my fans gosh. all like this, like what, what? Two missed stoppages. The guys in the booth are talking about it now. So they're not going to give them a penalty because a goal was scored. Am I hearing this correctly? <laughs> I, 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 I don't even know. <laughs> That's so weird. Two more for the lovely bingo card is goalie chance and then the rest you suck chance because I saw them doing that for sure. For the record, I'm morally opposed to goalie chants. I don't like them. I feel like they only bring bad juju. Uh, they're playing turn down for what? <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> it was weird not only having the first two goals called back, but on calls that I've never seen before. Well, the one was like it got, it was shot out of play because it, it hit the net. And then I never, the second one never, and it seemed like there could have been multiple ways it was called, question mark. <laughs> Does Tampa go for the hat trick of goals that gets called back or? The hat trick of missed stoppages. I mean, they're really uh, chirping the let them play crowd tonight. <laughs> also add hat trick and Cordy Howe hat trick to our lovely little bingo board. Gordy Howe hat trick. Tony X just tweeted, um, if three goals get overturned, is that a ref trick? We should have invited him to this call. That would have been fun. Yeah, I'm with Rachel. I've seen a hand pass never on a face-off before. And it's not like he ever lost contact with his stick. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but, I mean, his hand is right there. <laughs> It 
if nothing else, I'm learning a lot during this game. Accurate. Ditto. <laughs> We're in unprecedented legal territory here. Kick it up to the circuit court. Everything gets done in the second circuit. Little legalese, legal joke for you. I was raised by a lawyer. <laughs> well, that was a brutal hit behind the net. Oh, face-off infraction. I've never seen that before. Face-off infraction. Wait, who's calling this game? Did they say, they say Forslund's calling this one? Oh, no. Uh, off the post, got to add that to the mango board. Wild. Haha, <laughs> Brian, to all you young hockey players, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> if it's women's hockey, got to have grow the game in the middle. <laughs> I'm running out of spaces on this thing. Well, we can have like multiple, we'll have to have multiple boards. We just put them all in a list and like randomly spray them. All right. Water break for me. Oh, I love, I'm catching up with the chat, getting the rule book. I love the rule book. Love it. So wild. It's like, um, 
I saw so many different interpretations of the rule book or like different scenarios. Like when I was watching, what was it? 2019 women's worlds. <gasps> oh, poor Finland. <laughs> oh, poor Finland. They celebrated sticks, gloves, helmets on the ice, defeated the United States or so they thought. Nope. Some weird like mod podge of goalie interference, but I- I don't, I guess I don't understand completely how something can, you can pull something back. And if it, if you had caught it, then it would be a penalty. But since you didn't catch it, it's not, I don't, I get very confused. It's very confusing to me. Uh, Hence why I don't wear the stripes. (laughs) The amount of pressure in that job is just, it gives me anxiety just thinking about it because nobody likes you. If you do your job right, Nobody likes you. If you're wrong, nobody likes you. Just don't like you, period. They're like conditioned not to like you. Also, the amount of agility required is um, very impressive. I mean, I'm out on the fact that they're on the ice with no gloves alone. Like that alone is like, nope, couldn't do it. (laughs) No real padding either. No, linesmen are always in a position where when defensemen are behind the net and you got to get the puck out, they're like right a prime target for these 95, 100 mile an hour slap shots around the boards. Holy cannoli. I'm at 454. Shots on goal 31 to 12. <laughs> what? <laughs> Brian, imagine how mad everyone in Tampa will be if the Panthers score and go up one nothing. Well, if they're going to do it, they'll have to do it uh, shorthanded. They're about to go Tampa on a power play for me. Oh, gosh, they get it on the shorty. Can you just imagine? I want all the chaos. <laughs> but also- I'm, always with- I'm always rooting for chaos, always. Also, I'm mildly concerned given that we've already had a week of freaking death threats. I'm a little bit concerned. Tampa can't get anything set up. And the the Panthers, the thing that I'm noticing with them is they have 32 shots. But they're not like super high quality chances. It's, it's a weird game. They're both just waiting for somebody to make a mistake. Yeah, well said, Sebastian. Very weird kind of 
cadence to this game. I think it picked up a little bit after the first question mark recalled goal. Who knows? They happened like in what, two or so minutes of each other. I don't know if that's the technical stat, but they happened in quick succession. Um, yeah, very weird. And an improvement, Tampa, at least it's a shot on goal this uh, power play because that did not happen last time. <laughs> if they would have scored. <laughs> I wanted it, Erica. I wanted it. <laughs> the image of officials jumping on the boards, like hanging onto the glass. That's so funny when that happens. I want the practice of that because you know they have to practice that, right? I just want to see them, you know, that's their practice. It's like, ah, little like lemur jumps or something. really feel like Florida could use 31 goal scorer Anthony Duclair right now in their lineup. Rather than healthy scratch? Yeah. Yeah, I know someone mentioned it in the chat earlier. Like, come on. whoa have i have not seen this the stanley couple what like wordle hurdle i think that's what they're going for i've seen <laughs> two different wordles and i've never two different hockey wordles and i've never heard of the stanley couple apparently presented by upper deck there was a qr code on my screen <laughs> Stanley couple. And that at the girdle and then Beeson at the dangle. I want to try the Stanley couple. That could be our next intermission game as we see who can get the girdle fastest. Yeah, right. I don't know. I think they're trying to make it uh make it a thing. I don't know. So fetch. Did he just say 61 shot attempts, 34 on goal? Oh, my gosh. Oh, the Stanley couple, it's like the dangle where you, you, you pick a player in the NHL and they, it tells you if you have the right team or the wrong team or if you have the right division or position or nationality. Uh, uh, oh, 
stuff like that. So it's not as much fun as I, I made it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> there is one that's just the names, but I feel like I'm better at this one. End of the second. Still no score, despite attempts. So Tampa's got two disallowed goals, and all the Panthers have is a post. And to show for 31 shots versus 14. This, this is just, this game is, isn't, this isn't Panthers versus Lightning. It's Panthers versus Andre Vasilevsky. And lightning versus um, disallowed goals. It's a seventh inning stretch. <laughs> Do you remember that really long game? The the. <clears throat> the quintuple overtime game between Tampa and Columbus, Tampa and yeah, back in the, the bubble in 2020. And right before the start of the fifth overtime, they, um, or the fourth or fifth overtime, they, they had a sign up on the, on the board about doing the seventh period stretch, <laughs> which is a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to make to that, put that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glad they took advantage. Of course, I didn't watch baseball at all at that time, so I had to have it, have it explained to me. But in hindsight, it's very funny. Okay, so who breaks through? Like, is is Florida finally going to actually score here, or does Tampa finally get one they get to keep? Florida has game momentum. Tampa has mm. series momentum. That's all I would True. say. But I can imagine <clears throat> if we're talking about momentum, those two disallowed goals being a hell of a momentum killer for Tampa. Who knows, though? Second period was a lot better. Hey, hey to our Brazilian friends. Thanks for joining us. Definitely go check out that interview that I did with Tic Tac Goal. We went long, but it was a good one. <laughs> Always love it when we can hear from women covering hockey, especially you know, we're watching two teams that are playing in a quote unquote non traditional hockey market, but Brazil, let's go. I love it. There are fireworks out there. Let me see if I can see them. Ooh, fireworks. I love fireworks. Fireworks are one of those things where I'm like, oh, all right, whatever, fireworks, who cares? And then I see them, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're fireworks. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. It's our big fireworks um, weekend in Canada this year, other than like Canada Day weekend. But yeah, it's, uh, it's going pretty wild down here. Yeah, Victoria Day. It's like our Memorial Day, which I think is your next weekend. So today was a holiday. But couldn't see the fireworks. There's another building right in front of me, so I couldn't quite get there. Victoria Day. 
Ah. Well, happy Victoria Day. There you go. <laughs> Oh man, these crowd shots are so brutal <laughs> in the intermission report. And can we put that on the uh, lovely little bingo chat, devastated fan crowd chat? Because that happens all the time. It's like, oh. I'm going to have to alter it. I, um, I had my first draft in. Saw the first draft. Looking good. Hmm. yeah if tampa if tampa bay still wins this game wow i just don't even i don't even know Ooh, for my intermission report they found the puck and zoomed in on it good shot there that was literally the first time I saw the puck on the replay. <laughs> you saw it? I'm like 10 seconds behind you. So I'm like, okay, let me pay attention now. <laughs> well done. Well done, broadcast crew or production team, I guess. Best place in the Southern Hemisphere to stage an NHL exhibition. I was hmm. in Brazil. Um. Of course, it would be best to have one somewhere where there are people like um, Af like um, Australia or South Africa or something. But I think it would be fun to see if it's possible to do it in Antarctica. Just for the concept. I mean, from a climate perspective, that makes a lot of sense. It'd be kind of cool. I mean, I guess you could always just get hockey players down there, right? Yeah, it was, but I, I guess the idea of having one near um, people is the idea of, quote-unquote, cross it off <laughs> on a bingo card, rowing the game. So There you go. Because a lot of in the so so Southern Hemisphere, hockey's not that big of a game. So Yeah. South Africa, for sure. Australia makes a lot of sense. I'm trying to think. <clears throat> What's everyone snacking on? We're in our final intermission. I mean, in theory. <laughs> in theory. Double, double, double zero tie going into overtime. I just <laughs> polished off some jelly bellies. I had the smoothie mix. Ooh. Good stuff. Yeah. Ooh, jelly belly smoothies. I have, um, Dark chocolate covered raisins that I'm rocking with right now. I have still still supper, not at dessert yet. Um, chickpea pasta, which I feel like would make Nathan McKinnon very proud. Apparently, that's <laughs> a meme. <laughs> I think baby crackers and diet coke. Bacon crackers. Is it crackers flavored like bacon or is it bacon that's just in kind of cracker form? Yeah, you might know what they are. Um, they're called, they're like little bacon dippers. They're, they're in those uh, Ritz makes. Oh, maybe. They're always on the end of every grocery aisle in every store in Ontario. <laughs>
Ooh, we have in the trap Battle of PA <laughs> in Antarctica. I like it. Right, because of course it didn't even occur to me. Of course you have to have the penguins down there. <laughs> well played, well played, folks. Yeah, I didn't think of it either. As for snacks, strawberries, popcorn. Strawberry Sounds rhubarb is the best eat. pie. Although I will allow for debate on this. <laughs> I'm going to agree with you, Isabel. I'm going to agree. Yeah. Strawberry Ooh. rhubarb is just it's a perfect mix of sweet and a little, you know. Pens versus the, candy. the I like candy. that. Pens versus Kraken. I'd... Who says no? Not me. <laughs> Possibly the players, but I mean. Possibly the players. But if we're going for best slash most slash uh, most thoughtful Black Girl Hockey Club activations, that's obviously the matchup. Toronto's making a case, though. That Toronto be, trip was just... I'm not trying to be disrespectful. The mm. gate came out. I'm, I'm just... I, have to, I was like, wait a minute. We, we might have to find uh, a team number four because Toronto really has really been putting on. But Seattle Kraken, what was it? Three different drops? Three different merch mm-hmm. drops? Yep, yep. That's legit. All, all like super fashionable as well you know so good that hat that Renee had um it was very 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 hard not to buy that one so good so good the, but the Maple Leafs did get of his free shirts at our event up there which I love a free anything anything um and a free shirt with BJC plus the Maple Leafs on it that was that's pretty dope I'm gonna lie it's pretty dope. And that whole trip was just like it looks so um I was doing men's hockey stuff. That was oh it was uh frozen four. I was like, man, so close yet so far. <laughs> we we missed you on that trip for sure. Um I did I did pull some extra stuff aside too. So oh, snap. Uh, you know, maybe got the plug. May, maybe if you need something, I, I got you. But uh yeah, <laughs> it's I, I, I do hope you can come next year. It was it was it sucks that it was five weeks away because I'm still so amped from that trip. Oh, but. that's amazing. I love it. Although I was sad I could not be there personally, I was so happy for all y'all because it looked so amazing. Well thought out, well done. Bravo. That's great. Yeah, I can't talk enough about how fantastic the Leafs have been to work with um, and MLSC and everyone we worked with um, on those events. Was, it went so smoothly and all because um, they genuinely wanted us there and wanted to represent us and wanted to do everything they could to have, to make it a really good experience for everyone involved. So. Big, big shout out to, to the Leafs and MLC for that. Love to see it. Uh, both the Leafs and the Kraken came through big time on our meetups, you know, this year, the last two. I was just, I was lucky enough to go to both. And I was just like, I, I have no, there are no notes, no notes. All no good. Notes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. I can't wait to get on the road again with Black Girl Hockey Club. I haven't been to an in-person um an in-person meetup since you know the before times <laughs> i was like last time i saw you i think was at the pittsburgh meetup the first one yeah the first one. At, but in, in straight up in the before times <laughs> yeah properly in the before times so we just wipe the floor with everybody on the ball hockey court where we're waiting for the kids <laughs> erica was a beast it was amazing it was amazing oh, oh, she yeah. was not she did not play nice no, She's like, I'm here to win, and no. that is it. That's right. That's right. Are you going to be at our, uh, not to plug more things, the Juneteenth event coming up? So, there? yeah, I was going to go to that, but then I got tapped to call some um, soccer games. So they're, the NWSL is doing their um, 
Title IX celebration because there's actually an international window, I believe it is, during like the actual week of Title IX. So they don't have any games. Um, so they're doing it that weekend. I think it's the 17th, 18th, 19th. So I was like, ah. I know, sad face, but. Which was the, uh, the exact window of time we were planning on being in DC because not only do we have the um, <clears throat> mystics on the 19th, we are talking about um, seeing about the uh, Washington Spirit game on the 17th, but that might be a bit lofty because that one's not actually taking place in DC. Yeah, it's not in DC proper. I didn't have to coordinate some transpo, but oh, that would be so dope. Oh, I love it. You know, I love a strong crossover. Mm, love a strong crossover. I remember back talking about the before times. I, when I started covering sports, I would straight up like ask women's league commissioners, hey, like, why don't you work with, uh, you know, your fellow women's team in the area? And a lot of times the response is, you know, we just have to focus on ourselves. And, uh, you know, we're not really doing that i was like that's a missed opportunity and now it's not like they're competing for anything not at all and a lot of fans of women's sports watch multiple leagues in particular i mean i guess it's the same for men's sports but i mean it's you you know each other because you're like oh you know we're at a basketball game and then you turn around and you're at a soccer game it just seemed like a slam dunk so to speak but i love to see that it's happening now Love to see it. I mean, it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning. It's all about that collective and building that community. And that's exactly, exactly. what that is. Exactly. Yep. Pull the resources. Why reinvent the wheel when somebody else is doing it? Correct. Get everybody yep. together and keep it moving and we can move a little faster. Exactly. Renee hit that on the head earlier. So important. Smarter, not harder. We're better together. All of those <laughs> Just keep pulling out the phrases. How many more cliches? Let's go. Keep keep doing it. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. I don't want to leave that one. Teamwork makes the dream work. That was right. Yeah. Have to have that one. That's a classic. (laughs) All right. We're getting a request for Black Girl Hockey Club to go to San Jose. I'd love to see it. Sharks have signed the pledge. And the sharks, the sharks specifically in our mentorship program have been fantastic to work with behind the scenes. Yeah, you had a mentor last term and also this term, right? Or yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The um, I can only remember Scott's name right now, but yeah, he had a you know our mentor from our very first launch, and yeah, he got her connected with every single department he could think of because she was kind of you know kind of feeling that everything out he's like all right let me get you in this meeting and this meeting and this meeting and they're still meeting together and it's been six months since they ended he got her like hockey tickets and made sure she went to games and got her swag like he just took like such good care of her and was really invested it was awesome and she's i think she's graduating college this year or one of the recent mentees reached out about that which is yeah that's yep, that was her mm-hmm. that was her that's amazing. And you said, Rochelle, that those, the application for that's still open? Mm-hmm. Yep. We're taking mentees and uh, starting the next month is when that, it's always open, but we're going to start looking through everything next month to start up for our July to December term. Always, if you are interested in mentor, mentee, send it in. We review everything. We don't close that off. Just keep on sending those in and we will review them at time. So me and Tanisha and the rest of our lovely committee sit there and go okay who can we match up and you know play puzzles I will make sure to funnel that over through black girl hockey or excuse me black rosy media we are black girl hockey club (laughs) but um it's so critically important uh I've started the third period on my screen just got through puck drop puck drop just happened for me, yeah. Shots 34 to 15. Yeah. Vasilev is going to get a uh, assist in this game before he's going to let in a goal, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he's going to get a goal before he lets in a goal. <laughs> Would love to see that. 
Goalie goal, bingo card. Yes. I'm like trying not to react. I see Sebastian's probably about where I am. <laughs> Wait, but half the chat's there too. Oh, <clears throat> this can't be good. That actually was okay. I think I'm cheering for Florida. Gut feeling. Gut feeling we're going with it. You've decided I think so, which is not going to end well considering you're down three nothing in the series. But I mean, what's one more game? Yeah, and then another one, and then another, and then one. another one, and, and then, then another, another one. one. Well, that's how. Isn't that how the the Boston Red Sox they took their approach? Ended up like coming back from a three game deficit. Yeah, before. yeah, three game deficit, and then they end up winning the World Series. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> blah 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 <sighs> some pretty big steals from uh oh why am i forgetting his name right now he's the manager in uh in la for the dodgers dave roberts yes roberts yeah yeah, yeah. still remember that mm, not pleasantly one of those Ooh, when he That's said like, it <sighs> Yeah, and then he popped up. I could still remember. I was like, "Oh, we're gonna lose the series." I knew it. Then that was the moment. I knew. Fantastic. Oh, that was <sighs> fantastic. What I'm not a game? Boston was, fan. Oh. Well, yeah, who were they? They were playing. Well, I guess they were playing. Um... Oh, the Yankees. Yep. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Mets fan, so I had nothing but good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's a Mets fan, and she was just sitting there, like, just giggling in the corner when that was happening. Just like, nice. yeah. That's a real yeah. rivalry worst, there. Worst World Series I ever had to watch, and this is when I used to work at a Buffalo Wild Wings, was Philly versus the Yankees. I was like, oh. 2009? Oh, yeah. I guess that was, yeah, that was 09. Holy cannoli. Mm-hmm. Was that 09? 09, yeah. Maybe 09, yeah. Around there. The last time the Yankees won. Oh, that was brutal. Mm. I was enjoyed that, that one. <laughs> Was that the year uh, they had Jay Z play on the field? Empire State of Mind. I am pretty sure yes. That That's about, about time that yeah yeah yeah. I was I, living in Seattle at the time, so that yeah that makes sense. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That was like the wildest thing to me. I I like love the song being from New York. Logistically, as a purist baseball fan, I. I was just like, I don't, I don't even want to know how this is like, (laughs) like, cause it was like in the middle of the game. It wasn't before. It wasn't after it was like, it was very odd. It was so, I didn't like it. I didn't like, I didn't like it. Oh, anyway, we'll have to do another live watch party so you can hear all my baseball rants. So I'm ready. Let's go. I'm not great with baseball. Um, I've only been watching it for like a month or whenever the season started because I work at a bar with a lot of TVs and that's what everyone talks about. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think of the concept of robot umps um, calling games based purely on this rectangle in the middle and not with a human? I don't like it. And why? I, I will definitely say, obviously, umps get it wrong a lot, especially balls and strikes, you know. But I think that goes back to, I mean, Sebastian mentioned earlier, I don't like the human error taken out of it because it's a game played by humans. I was going to bring then, it up earlier then, too. You but. know, and then also the the issues they've had with it as far as adjusting for height. And I'm just like, you can't have the same strike zone for, you know, like Gleyber Torres versus uh, Aaron Judge. Like I was going like to say Judge, yeah. Day. 
Judge is a giant. He's a giant, giant man. I <laughs> he's like a lumberjack, like proper. I can't believe how large that man is. Very large. It's wild. That and is like, one thing. Yeah. Athletes and how big they actually are is just a mind blowing thing all the time. It's so wild. And it's not like, you know, like Randy Johnson, super tall, but mm-hmm. like long. He was a mm-hmm. long man. He's a beanpole. Yes. Judge, like you, I feel like if you accidentally tripped into him, you might be concussed. Like just solid, yeah. <laughs> solid. Imagine you, you, you're him. You're between him and John Carlos Stanton. Like what? <laughs> Imagine them on skates, like in no. a game like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> like to bring it back to hockey, three inches. It's fine. Yeah, like I guess how how tall is Charo off off skates? Six, nine. Nine. It's very memorable. Nine. Oh, what? That's off of like flat on the floor. No skates. Wow. That is a massive man. Oh my gosh. I get, I, uh, I, I sometimes, cause I, I height skipped a generation of my family. So I got nothing. Uh, my cousin, he, he was just honored in Chicago this weekend. Uh, they built a, sca- a statue after him. Um, he uh, He's like a foot taller than me, like a solid foot taller than me. I look up to him, but his kids are my height. His kids are all my height. But yeah, it's it's pretty wild. And, and height, I know in, when Niagara Falls, they have, I don't think this museum exists anymore, but they have like a replica of the tallest man on earth. And it was a it's it's pretty wild like the, he put he put guys like chara like they're nobody compared to what he was he was just a giant what oh my gosh that's that's just so wild to me i'm like on the low end of average at five five and a half <laughs> the low end of average and i'm just I'm like five, oh. five if you round up <laughs> round her up Round up how many inches? I mean, it's like a sixth of an inch technically. So it's like, it's very slight. So I'll just like flip my hair a little bit. It'll be fine. And we, you and I had that conversation in Toronto about everyone being just a lot taller than we'd expected. You were actually being shorter than I expected, Rochelle. <laughs> so I have tall girl energy is what you're telling me. I like that. Apparently. Yeah. yeah, I'm very tiny. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hold on. You see all the players, right? <laughs> I know they're all like. I'm like, are they going to get to keep this one? Is the question. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, is this going to be our goalie one appearance? We're going to have an offside or something. How many other challenges could there be? I stick, maybe. I think so. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Like, I'm so nervous. The only thing I could think is maybe high stick because the puck does cross. Oh, they gave us... So it was already so it was Pat Maruno. That's funny. Okay. I don't have the sound on though, so you guys are gonna have to tell me if something gets challenged. I, didn't I think they took how... a look at it, but yeah, it's thumbs up. We're all Did good. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I... can Florida even challenge anything anymore? Yeah, right. Well, they've won both, so I guess. Right. They- they get to keep. Right. They still have their timeout too. Yeah. They've been Might good so far. Oh. Yikes. Behind the um, net there. Yeah. I didn't know how far everyone was, but yeah, they gave the thumbs up. So that's a good goal. But it was so funny. Like right after the goal, you see all the players like looking up. <laughs> they didn't even react. They were just like, is it good? <laughs> was this um, nice dead? Uh, he kind of grabbed his face, but. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking of anything, maybe high stick, 
but they said play on good goal and it has to be setting in now for florida I almost, I could have picked Pat Maroon to be one of my, my players that give me Tim Hortons points if they score. I didn't, but huh. I figured what are the odds? Apparently very high. <laughs> I think I get some for Claude Giroux though. So that's a decent chance. There you go. We had coffee for like a hundred free days because we picked so many in a row, right? It was awesome. Oh, that is very impressive. I, this past season lost three different six day streaks. For the Americans in the crowd, you get free coffee for a week if you get if you pick right seven days in a row. Mm. Um, it's been heartbreaking a couple of times. I also don't drink coffee, but it's just to be able to have done it. <laughs> it's the principle. Claude Giroux, Nick, Nick Paul, Pierre Edward Belmar, and none of them has scored yet. Should have picked an apps player. Would have been a better choice. Yeah, what an interesting goal. I think he touches it below the crossbar, and I think it it was an own – well, there's no such thing as an own goal technically in hockey, but that's unfortunate. I put. I think I put own goal on the on the bingo thing, did I? Did you? I missed it. I, I put it on. I might have taken it off. I love it if it's on there. It, there is, yeah, bottom uh, near the left. Love it. Love it. All right. How are we? Let's see. How are we doing on the bingo? Let me see. What would we have in this game if we were to use this? Um, okay. We have a post slash crossbar free space. I heard obviously on the Sportsnet stream. So that's a free space. Nice um huh own goal yes we definitely got a euphemism in this one um gold's getting challenged that's a big one were any of the this wasn't a power play goal was it probably not no <laughs> wtf is goalie interference <laughs> ah, that's great Oh, I didn't know that either, Sebastian. I I might have remember something. Maybe I did know that. I don't know. Like I think I think it is Bren brought up, but I think all the talk goes to like Zito and Fenton that that he's mm -hmm. the missed one. So I think I did know that. Also, Ohio State has a black AD. Did not know that. Learned that from the women's Frozen Four when the Ohio State took home their first championship, first NCAA championship. Zoe Hickel now with the Seattle, well, technically she's with the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Hope to get out to the left coast to see some AHL hockey once Seattle has their team all set up. Very curious to see what they do. So I saw someone make a point like, how Seattle? They have like a whole team, a whole AHL team to build. <laughs> We've got a lot of work to do in the offseason. <laughs> and it's so far from Seattle. That's the thing that kind of throws me. I'm like, that's very yeah. far. <laughs> I mean, I get in the car and drive there. It's closer than Charlotte. True. Which is where they're playing now. I say we, we co-parent with uh, Florida. Mm. We're co-parents. So uh, 
Because <laughs> yeah, Coachella, you're either going to have to drive to the Palm Springs airport, which is an hour and a half ish away, or you're going to drive all the way back to LA to get on a plane, even just two, two and a half hours, depending on the traffic on the 10. So, you know, that's not exactly convenient. I can't say I picked up on all of those references, but I will <laughs> circle back for notes. <laughs> um, I did hear uh, have good information from Zoe Hickel that apparently there is a direct flight from Alaska. Or <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, it's got to be from Palm Springs Airport then. Yeah, because otherwise you're driving back to LA, and that is not does it's not even a pretty drive. That drive is no, it's not great. Okay, good to know. Good to know. It's all desert. Desert. It's like. Driving in through a barren Virginia, it sounds like. Virginia, mm. coming from New York, driving through Virginia is like when I'm like, Phew. all right, especially at night. I'm like, oh my gosh. Or actually driving from New York to Tulsa, once you pass St. Louis. Flat. Nothing. Nothing there. Nothing for miles. Yeah, you're just, you're just out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're just out there. All right. Let's see. I'm at 10, 18 shots on goal, 42, 23 Tampa Bay though, with one goal, Florida with nothing. They've got 10 minutes to get it together. Oh, oh. I'm about 30 seconds behind. I think since Renee's not here anymore, I might be the farthest behind. It's all good. Try to keep my reactions to a minimum. All right. So if Tampa. (laughs) You're reacting. I can see you reacting. I'm trying not to say anything. I just have to cover my face. I'm at a commercial break right now. Mm, There it is. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) You got there. They're having a moment. They're having a moment. That was a good, good save. Mm -hmm. That's why they pay him. How much is he paid? It's a lot. Sergey the Busby contract. One sec. Yeah, how much does he get paid? It's too much, but I don't know by how much. Isn't that like a thing? I only remember this vaguely because a lot of people felt that Dreaker was overpaid when he mm-hmm. was in Florida. Um, ten million a year. Mm. Um, until the end of time. Years. <laughs> yeah, it was seven years when he signed in 2019. Um. So until 2026 and um, seven through $10 million a year, it's classic UFA overpayments, which will always happen. But 2019, that was a year after John Tavares um, in free agency. Borowski was the big ticket in the next year. And then it was Panarin, I'm pretty sure. My favorite contract still is, oh, uh, Erica, you know this, the Mets that they play him every day. Is it Bo Jackson Day? Is that it? No, Bobby oh, no. Bonilla. Bo- that, bo- yes. I was like, it's something with a B, and I was like, Bo Jackson's not right. But yes, Bobby, Bobby Bonilla Day. Good day. Coming up, too. <laughs> I think there's still a few more years. I think there's oh. like four or five more. <laughs> Bobby Bo Day. Oh, I met him is. once at... Oh, yeah? Uh, uh, as previously mentioned, I worked at a Buffalo Wild Wings and everyone knew I was a massive Mets fan. Also, has anyone seen the movie Empire Records? Okay. 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 Keep that reference to the side. So I'll tell you the, the Bobby Bow one first. So uh, I'm, I think I was maybe one of the managers at the time. And so someone comes up to me, they're like, Hey, Erica, can you take a look at this credit card? I'm like, what is it? Like, you think it's a fake or whatever? They're like, no, look at the name. 
And they're like, is that like, you know, is that who, who I think it is? And I was like, first of all, like, just generally speaking, we should probably not do this, you know, just like swipe the card and keep it moving. <laughs> but, but they knew I was a Mets fan. So I went over to the table and I was like, okay, here you go. And then I was like, oh, are you? And he was like, not entertaining it at all. He was like, if you're going to ask, you're going to have to ask a question. I'm not giving anything away. It turns out it was him. Had a great conversation, told him I was a big Mets fan, then kept it moving. Apparently, some of the other staff went over to him and I was like, guys, like, leave him alone. He's with his family, like, let him eat. But they went over and I thought they were harassing him, but they got him to sign something for me, which was so cool. So I have a a (laughs) T-shirt, Buffalo Wild Wings T-shirt signed by Bobby Bo. But the Empire Records is, you know, when um, Liv Tyler's character, she's like, I'm bringing Rex's lunch. I like low key pulled one of those when um, it was Doc Gooden came and we used to do this thing. Uh, there was a local radio station in New York. Uh, the Mets used to have their games on it, WFAN, and they would do these things called rants. And they hosted one at our Buffalo Wild Wings and they were like, all right, Erica, listen, Doc's coming in. And we're going to pick a server and they're going to have, I was like, well, I'm the server. So I don't, you don't have to like, you don't have to pick. There's, there's nothing to pick. They're like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I was like, excuse me. Like, I don't like, why are we having this conversation? Like I am going to do this. Nobody. Else, uh, and I literally said, I was like, if I'm not the server, I'm walking out. So you might as well just take me off the damn schedule because I will not. I refuse. And I come in and everyone's like trying to play it cool. I was like, I already told you. So like, we don't have to play these games. Am I on the schedule or am I not? (laughs) And I was, and then the whole time played it super cool. He invited the staff up and I started freaking out. They were like, Erica, you've been with this man and his entire party for like three hours. Why are you freaking out now? I was like, well, I was doing my job. (laughs) It's totally different. I was working and it was fine. Now you want me to like meet him as a human being, (laughs) but it was cool. He was like, Oh, Erica, get over here. Let's get a picture. He was so sweet. It was amazing. So met two Mets legends working and slinging wings and beer. That's awesome. And for everybody who does not know the Bobby Bonilla story, he stopped playing with the Mets in 2011 until July 1st, 2035. 35. (laughs) 1.5. excuse me, 1.19 million every July 1st through 2035. Bobby Bonilla. That's will be been a hell of a, like a bio, right? Yep. The, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, his offensive production diminished and then they were just like, okay, you look, you, we're just going to catch that piece, but we'll pay 2035. Yes. I was like, I, I think it has like a bit. was still being paid, but not till that far. Same with like Luongo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's legendary. We paid, I think, uh, twenty nine point eight million total when he did not. He didn't play a single season <laughs> for the Mets. Crazy, 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 crazy. But listen, smart, smart deal on his part. I didn't know he also has a deferred contract with the Baltimore Orioles. Oh, I <laughs> did not know that. Was initiated for in two thousand four that pays him five hundred thousand a year for twenty five years. <laughs> This man is just this man. I love it. Just you know, buying beer and wings somewhere in New York. <laughs> I you mentioned the Baltimore Orioles, and I can't I can't hear that team without thinking of how um, scared I am of their logo. Um, I don't know what it is about the Orioles logo. I get a very strong Duolingo Duolingo owl vibe from the Baltimore Orioles logo. <laughs> it, it terrifies me. I think I see it in my nightmares. There's something about it. I don't. All right. I, that's very interesting. It is an interesting uh, logo. I wouldn't say that it full on frightens me, but um, it's noticeable. Duolingo. That's hilarious. It's, noticeable is a very diplomatic way of putting it. Yeah, I went on an entire rant on Locked on Crack and how, just generally speaking, I'm and mascots. And then they were like, oh, aren't you a Mets fan? I was like, yeah, but Mr. Met could be like a human. He just has a baseball head. Like Mr. That- Met is a person. Mr. Met, thank you. That's exactly, I was he like- He's married. Is- he has children. They have a whole life. The Mets have a whole life. <laughs> he has a complete, a you Met. know, rivalry yeah. with uh, Thor. 
I'm blanking on his actual name right now. That was the Noah most hilarious Syndergaard. thing ever. Thank you. Yeah. That rivalry was amazing. Amazing. Like I, I was like, I, I don't, I don't know why we're acting like Mr. Met and Mrs. Met aren't real. Like, I don't, I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> so like Mr. Met and Gritty get like passes for um, mascots because they just have a whole personality that is just transcend sport. Because there's people that do not watch any hockey that know exactly who Gritty is. I will give you that. I will, I will see yes on that last point. Gritty freaks me out. Gritty is my Duolingo bird. <laughs> <laughs> Same yeah, eyes. I realized I was muted, but I think we're opposites. Uh, same eyes. In the game. Except those like the googly eyes. The mascot himself has those googly eyes. It just kind yeah, of they just like moves. spin around. It's fantastic. Um, who's the Boston Wally or something? Like named after the wall? I don't know. That's a really weird one. I don't know. <laughs> now there's, I don't know. Anyway. Are there any, wait a minute, speaking of mascots, did the Seattle Kraken ever name their mascot? Uh, like there was one, I wasn't in Seattle at the time, but they, uh, I'd seen reports that there was one like around their practice facility and I don't think they ever officially announced it. And if they did, LOL, because I just missed it. But they, like it's like launched their mascot. Yeah, they exactly. They soft launched a mascot and maybe they were like, maybe we'll wait till we get a four game win streak. <laughs> Let's get four consecutive wins. Like, you know, four, first things first, and then maybe we'll do the mascot. <laughs> yeah, the 21-22 the Seattle Kraken or what everyone thought the 2017-18 um, Golden Knights would be. <laughs> literally like no one should have there were so many indications that that was not going to happen ron francis basically all but said it a million times it's like yeah we're not going to be vegas that being said my bold prediction when i started the show was the seattle kraken will win a stanley cup before the golden knights and i mean i've got it, one season under my belt of my bold prediction not being wrong it's not right yet but it's not wrong the way that golden knights are just kind of imploding at the moment it feels like i it i don't i don't disagree with your bold prediction i feel like it is very bold but very possible this is their this is their summer too like they got seattle can do I mean, essentially, they can they can wake up on free agency day and just be like, "All right, we're going to take the five best players," and they have the space and money to do it. So exactly, like- yeah. If if Francis craps the bed, then I will start looking into what everyone said about him after the expansion draft. But until then, I think he gets the benefit of the doubt for sure. And I mean, how many we've got like. 30 some odd picks in the next three drafts. <laughs> Gotta build up those firebirds, man. I'm like seven exactly. years will be pretty good. Exactly. And th- that's another thing that I said, though. I was like, the Seattle Kraken need to work this offseason to get it done because we're in a division where all of those teams have already done that. <laughs> You know, like they've already got all the draft picks and in theory, they should be getting good right about now in the Pacific division in theory. Oh yeah, that's right. There was an NFT like mascot situation. I forgot about that. Yeah. NFTs are weird just in general. I don't think I really get it. But 
we'll see. I feel like my brain understands it, but can't translate it to words. It's just concepts. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's literally like fetch, like making a thing that's not a thing, a thing. And so, I don't know. I'm I'm only I'm already late to the the party when it comes to things that everyone likes. So <laughs> NFTs are like not my vibe. But it could be a thing. It could be a cool thing. I don't know, like people dropping like 16K on a an image. Which yeah. I know there's more to it. Yes. However. I mean, for that money, I better like, I want a Bobby Bow type deal. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just don't understand how we got to this, to this moment where, because like, if it's, if it's no, if it's called like some sort of investment, isn't there like millions of other things that you can invest in that are, are more of a guarantee or a sure thing? I just, I don't know how we got here to, to NFTs in society. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. But we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens. Even like cryptocurrency and stuff like that. We've got full on stadiums now named after crypto. Sayonara Staples. Staples Center forever. I'm sorry. Nobody here calls it crypto.com because (laughs) why? Crypto, and not even crypto stadium, it's crypto.com stadium. Really? Crypto.com arena, which is weird. It took years for me and most people I know in Toronto to start calling it Scotiabank Arena as well. It was here at Canada Center for most of my life, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's like the it's still Staples Center on Google Maps, even. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, if, it, if, if Google says it's Staples, then who are we? Yeah, I don't know. I know, I don't, like, people are at certain stadiums now. Didn't an NHL team or or two start taking crypto as payment for tickets and stuff? I feel like I read that last year in the modified bubble-ish situation. I don't know. People getting paid in crypto, like athletes, I don't know. I know in, in Ontario, uh, especially in the, the greater Toronto area, in convenience Ooh. stores, we have like regular ATMs. And then beside those ATMs will be like a Bitcoin, Bitcoin yeah. something. Whoa, that's crazy. All right. I'm at 3.30. Score is still one nothing. Tampa Bay. Play for me. Just stop the 3.38. So it might be a minute. Yeah. No time like the present, Florida. Keep your season going. I just got a stoppage, but that last sequence, Tampa looked like they definitely got a jolt. (laughs) They're just all over Florida right now. Um, Well, this is interesting. Let me unmute. I don't know what they're saying. No way! Was there a puck over glass or something? I saw the play stop, but I didn't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, Isabel, but I'm still traumatized with all the delay of games that happened. I think, I want to say it was in the 2016 playoffs when the Caps and Penn series, we had like four delay of game penalties like on top of each other. And I was like, really? Ah. 
Oh my God. It was a year before I started watching hockey, um, let alone paying attention to the Capitals, but I'm pretty sure it was 2016 because it was just like we ended up having like a five on three. It was very, it was tense. Mm -hmm. Well, this could get interesting in the next couple of minutes. Something, something, momentum, etc. That would go on the bingo board. Also, Eric is reacting to something, so I have to. (laughs) Florida got to start shooting the puck. This is insane. (laughs) Florida got to start connecting their passes. I just saw one really bad one, but that's bound to happen. I don't even think I was breathing for the last minute and a half. And I have no Shame. skin in the game. I have absolutely no skin in the game. And that, that was intense. so intense. Oh, I'm like crying. I don't even know why. That was so wild. How did they not score? Oh my they God. Kept passing. I don't they think they shoot. got a shot off. Yeah. They got like two opportunities and it was absolutely wild. That holy cow. Oh, that sucks. I just feel bad for Giroux. And then, like, I don't. LOL at I'm sure. the goal, he's just like, <laughs> it was like Kennedy Marchman mm-hmm. scoring, just like nonchalant. She's so low key, MVP of the PHF. If you ever look at her goal, Sally, it's non existent. She's just like, yeah, I just undressed the whole defense. No big deal. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was, yeah, that was very chill. I've seen a couple of, was that? him out of the penalty box there because I thought he was in the box I think it was uh, I can't I didn't track it well I was gonna say I've seen one two one just, Jillian Dempsey uh, <laughs> wow. this score would have been doubled up if all of those other goals counted <laughs> yeah wow watching a sweep yeah and then watch it just look at the shot total speaking of doubled up yeah uh, 49. it's like Oof. What's watching the Penguins face Shesterkin again? Oh, more accurately, watching the Stars face Ottinger, but they actually won that series. No okay, offense. Amy, Amy's got two things: puck deflection mm. off breath for bingo card, and then President's Cup curse. The womp, President's womp. Cup curse. Oh, yeah, yeah, now it happens. Awful. Well, Rachel, is I do feel a little bit bad for Jumbo. I will say that I agree. I do feel bad for Jumbo. This is, I think, oh, it's probably his last shot. Yeah. I don't think he's coming back. He might. Who knows? He's done. Yeah. Yeah. Go see the handshake line. I have to see the goalies shake hands. Then I'm good to finish the game, but yeah. I have to see the goalies. That's the best part. Maybe the captains. Vasilevsky in the playoffs. You just I don't bet against them. You can't. Exactly. I can't help but think of how. Imagine maybe how the series would have gone if the Leafs had won in the first round, which is kind of a non-starter at this point. But I have to agree with the 
people in the chat who said that um, there's a President's Cup purse. They don't they ever seem to make it mm -hmm. to the final. Washington held that for years. Yep. Yeah, right. I love it. Colorado. Maybe that's why they lost to New Jersey when I called that game, just to avoid the President's Cup curse. <laughs> oh, man. I think the last time the President's Trophy winners won the Cup was, I think, when the Chicago wins in the past decade. But don't quote me on that. I'm going to check. I thought it was longer. I thought it might have been like 91 or 92. Wow. What a game. So then you've got all the drama and fanfare and death threats in this next series, St. Louis mm -hmm. hosting Colorado. That one already started. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but wow. That like we didn't really get into it, but oh my gosh. Just be good humans, hockey fans. Mm. Maybe let's don't start throw there. things at others. Yeah, 2013 Chicago won the President's Cup and also President's Trophy and also the Stanley Cup. Mm. But before that, 2002 Detroit. So wow. it's not common. Not at all. No. Yeah, I think Amy in the chat saying it's there's only two in the cap era, which kind of lines up with what you just said as well. Yeah. Oh, look at that. St. Louis scored for me. <laughs> Who scored? Do you see? Uh, oh, I can just switch my game. I'm watch it right now. Oh, David Perron. He won. He actually scored a couple last game, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it was Pareko. They're very similar sounding. Mm. True. Perron is another one of those X Factor guys in the playoffs, though. Yeah, mm. former Golden Knight. Says, right? Yeah, Golden Knight, former Penn. He's got just got so much playoff experience, and it Ooh, it shows. Nice move. Look at that. Just so much like body awareness. That's so important in hockey. I feel like it's an underrated skill being able to cut through. I have no idea how they do some of what they do in such right. tight quarters. I've seen a couple of, I guess, Tyler Sagan goals that look like that as well. Mm. Um, and it's not, it's not quite the same, but I always like seeing the, the guys um, who stand basically right in front of the opposing players in that um, team's net and see them, being shoved around by pretty much the entire other roster and still managed to get some goals in. Amazing. So the, the, the agitators, it's fun. They're fun to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That like a, net fun presence. Hey. James Van Riemsdyk was big on that when he was in Toronto. And I think um, polarizing example, but Brendan Gallagher does that a lot too. Uh, uh, Patrick Hornquist is one of my favorites on that. He's always like down and dirty right there. Love it. Yeah. Don't really see that too much in Seattle Kraken games. We need more net front presence. Or just, <laughs> like height overall would be nice. <laughs> offensive, uh, offensive player with height or forward, I should say, more specifically with height instead right, of, kind of heavy legged defenders. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say Alexiak, but he's a D man, right? Yeah. Mm. So I say a successful watch party, guys. I think this was I a super so. interesting game. It really um, was. We picked a good one. We did. Good job, guys. Good job. We well done. Series ender happened to be because we we planned this one out the moment we got the schedule. None of the games had been played yet. We had no no way of knowing what this mm -hmm. would, how it would end up. Yep. But, and we saw some history being made. So there you go. Love to see it. Well, thanks everyone in the chat that joined us. <laughs> LOL. When the abs lost to the to the Kraken, I knew they were up to something. Probably also accurate. But um, thank you so much for joining us on behalf of. Black Rosie Media for me. And of course, all of us representing Black Girl Hockey Club. We appreciate you joining. I don't know. We might have to do it again. There's definitely more hockey. So I'm in. I'm not oh. opposed. Not opposed. Excuse we'll me. Be a fun time to do that. They stream those on Twitch, a uh, few of them, so we can make that um make that a lot easier for everyone to watch. Excellent. So what do y'all think? Let us know in the chat. Keep it going. We're gonna sign off soon, but if you want us to do another one of these watch parties, let us know what series you'd like. And uh, we'll go to It'll the big bosses. Sure. And I guess yeah. Tampa's going to be playing either New York or Carolina. Could be interesting. Yeah, they get to. Rather be New York, I think. But yeah, I'd say so. I mean, Keandre Miller, that suit the other day. Oof. Oh, that was a good suit. I will give him that. 
the color, like that's the aesthetic. Color. That I think, uh, the color <laughs> was just like beautiful. Also, like that's the kind of hockey content that I need in my life. <laughs> Good walk in fits. That's why I liked watching the PHF ones because I actually dressed. Yeah, up. exactly. That so and the fun. WNBA fits. So you. fun. Yes. Give us the fits. I mean, like I know they're pretty strict hockey, hockey guys have to be all but interesting some of them do some of them do which is cool well all right so we're gonna sign off isabel thank you so much rochelle amazing in the chat sebastian you did amazing coming in here with you know we got maria as well thank you all so much for all you do for black girl hockey club obviously renee fearless leader joined us earlier and uh, thank you for everyone else that popped yeah, in. Thank you also so much for hosting and having yeah. and interacting with us and with the chat. And it really, really kept the, the conversation going and kept it uh, interesting and lit. So Always a pleasure to do that hockey. <laughs> All right, everyone, take care of yourselves and each other. Hold fast, stay true if you're a Kraken fan. <laughs> Have a good night.